everybody it's pun the frugal streamer and i have a new video i want to talk about the ndi i haven't talked about ndi in a while and there's some news that's came out recently with it so i figured i would revisit it and for you people that do not know about it yet i really think you need to especially if you're a frugal streamer like myself and you really don't want to pay over 200 dollars for a capture card so if you're interested in that then stay tuned to this video because this one will really be a game changer for your live stream Okay, so NDI, what is NDI? Well, NDI stands for Network Device Interface. It's made by a company called NewTek. It is a free protocol. They release SDK tools for this so that other companies can use their protocol, their technology, and their own products. So we're now seeing cameras use it. We're seeing uh, even free apps like uh, uh, OBS and you know Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio, vMix, Skype, Zoom, Teams are all using NDI protocol now, and it is a great way to send video and audio in high definition over your ethernet from one client to another. In terms of what we're talking about, it would be your game PC to your stream PC. So it's a really neat way of getting your game audio and video over to your stream PC without a capture card. You don't need a capture card. You need uh, a gigabyte ethernet, which you can get a switch you know off of amazon for twenty dollars pretty much any router made within the last three or four years supports gigabit ethernet you need cat six cables and you're good to go uh it uses about 100 megabit somewhere in the neighborhood i was looking at mine and i was running a, a 1440p 60 video over from my game pc to my stream pc and it was using anywhere from 90 to 100 megabits per second so it uses uh you know in terms of gigabit ethernet about 10 percent of your bandwidth ndi is fantastic so some of the pluses of NDI, okay, first of all, it's free. doesn't cost you a thing. You can go to in New Tech's website. I'll provide a link down below. Uh, you can download their NDI tools. So the latest version of NDI is NDI 4.5. It uses New Tech's own codec that is uh, called Speed HQ. Okay, now that's for the main NDI that uses, you know, un well, virtually uncompressed lossless video and audio. Uh, the compressed version, NDI HX, and I think HX2, uses H.264 for significantly more compression and significantly less bandwidth usage. So it's good for Wi-Fi devices, for instance, cameras on Wi-Fi that can send a NDI signal over Wi-Fi. It's kind of what it's designed for. Uh, the latest news that we got with NVIDIA is now NDI is supposed going to be NVENC supported. So we should see that incorporated into it here soon, as soon as we can get OBS plugin updated. Streamlabs can update Streamlabs OBS and all that good jazz. But currently that is being supported through the NDI HX, not the full NDI. Okay, so hopefully we'll see that in the future where we can actually take advantage of that. But NDI is really good. I think you're, you'd are you be really impressed with it. And side by side, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between it and a capture card. While there is subtle differences, you really have to look hard. And uh, I have a recording right here of Star Wars Squadrons, the brand new game that's just come out by EA. And just a couple minutes of me flying around, but there's a few instances where you can tell differences between the two. Uh, now the video on the left is the capture card, video on the right is of course NDI. And in, in a couple freeze frames, you could see a little bit of blockiness in the NDI when compared to the capture card. But that's subtle and rare. And when you're moving around, it's really hard to notice. And when you're doing this for a live stream where your bit rate is already limited anyway, I really don't think it'll make much difference. So what I wanna do now is let's go ahead and let's get into how you set up NDI over your game PC and your stream PC. And there is a couple of ways that you can do it. And I will cover both of the ways that I prefer doing it myself. And I can show you some things that you can do with NDI that's really cool. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to the game PC here. Now the game PC, you will need to have the NDI tools installed. The great thing now is when you install the NDI tools, it also installs the run times for you. Uh, before you kind of had to do that a little separate. But you can now install this NDI tools if you go to New Tech's website, or I think it's called NDI TV is a quick way to get to it now. Select on NDI tools here, go all the way down to the very bottom. 
and you download the Windows format or the Mac format, whichever one you're using. Well, once you click on the download, you'll have to fill out some information here, personal information. Uh, they don't ever ask you for any Thing related to bank accounts or anything like that. They just want your email and stuff and what your use is going to be. But once you download that, what you're going to want to use is this guy right here, okay? And it's going to install all these for you. So you'll go to your start menu or you can do a search and you should look for the scan converter app, okay? So when that's running, well, all it's going to do is it's going to run in the background like this and you're controlling everything by going and right clicking on the icon here and then you have your controls here now currently i have mine set to monitor fresh rate you can set it to 60 fps uh, 59.9 430 whatever you want to set that to uh, you have frame rate here you got the capture settings now capture settings by default captures your display but you can also set a region of interest which is a box that you can adjust and anything inside the box will be captured which can proved to be nice you can also capture your mouse pointer or you can unselect that if you don't want your mouse pointer show uh, you have webcam video sources here and any webcam you have installed on your system including virtual webcams like obs's virtual camera which is cool you can use that uh, you can also choose a microphone for your webcam audio source. Likewise, for your audio source here, you can choose any source that you have available. System audio is your default playback device inside of Windows. So whatever you have that set to in Windows, that's what will come here. Okay. Also, what is great about the latest version, scanning version, you now have KVM control. This is one of the th things they added with the new update, which is really neat. So you use this, and then on your stream PC, you would use the NDI monitor, and you can have KVM. KVM control, your keyboard, video, and mouse remotely, which is really neat. All right, so future pun here. I want to pause the video for a minute. I want to elaborate a little bit more on this whole KVM thing. I hadn't really used it before, but as soon as I'd done the commentary and I thought about something, I was like, you know, my son wants to live stream, right? And he has a really nice gaming PC and he could probably live stream and game off the same PC. But wouldn't it be nice if he could actually take advantage of using my streaming PC? The issue is, well, he's probably about 50 feet from my streaming PC. And while we are connected through ethernet, everything's on the network, you know, he just can't have control of my streaming PC, but with NDI, using Scan Converter and their studio monitor that you get with the NDI tools for free, he can control my stream PC. So that's what we have now done. We have set it up so that he can use Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, whatever he wants to use, by controlling my stream PC through what we're using actually is my laptop. We have a nice laptop. We don't have two monitors for him downstairs. So the laptop right now is a nice solution until we can get him a second monitor where he can use that second monitor for KVM control and monitoring chat and all that. So what we've done is we've allowed him to use the laptop and the laptop does a good job. It works great. Thought it would be neat to share what we're doing with it since I actually started using it. So I've never personally used it though. So it'll be something new for me to explore in another video. But that's really the setup for it. And what it does is it's automatically sending your video over your network and it's just waiting for a client to be able to pick it up for display. It's that simple. That's how it works. It's really good. And as you can see, that's what I'm using right now. This is actually the NDI uh, display that you're seeing on the recorded video. The one thing that I really like about NDI about this is you can almost, if you were playing a game, you can near about play your game off of the OBS display because it is so close to zero latency, it's ridiculous. Um, it's unbelievable how good it is. Um, I've done a side-by-side -side where I've shown both my game screen and the stream PC screen at the same time, and you can't tell a difference visually between the two. It's just so good and it's really nice. So once you get that installed and you have you have the scan converter running, then what you need to do is you need to switch over to the stream PC. So this is the stream PC. Of course, you can see OBS here. And with OBS Studio, you'll need to install the NDI plugin, OBS NDI plugin. Um, 
go to obsproject.com, find it. It's very simple to install. It comes as an executable that you can just use the wizard to install it that way, which is what I recommend you do. Uh, if you have the latest version of NDI and you use the NDI tools to install on both of your PCs, which you'll need to do, that will install the runtimes for you already. So all you would need to do is just download the plugin itself and install the plugin. Okay, and once you get the plugin installed, you'll know you got it right because you'll see NDI source listed inside of your source list here. So if you wanted to do an NDI source, you would actually start that up. And what we'll do here is I will go over here. This is the game PC. Let me do this here. And you can see this is the NDI display. And if I were to go here and click the NDI source, you'll see you click the NDI source and what I've got here, this is the game that I've actually got. So here is the uh, UI for it and it'll get a, give you a list of all of your NDI sources that are showing up on your network and you just choose the one you want. In the case here, I have two outputs because I have two displays coming off of my game PC. So whatever display you want, which in the case of my actual main game PC is the uh, display one. Okay, bandwidth I have set the highest. That's what you want. Now, if you just want an audio feed, you can go to audio only. And you can select your select audio feed. Uh, source timing is what I use. Um, I really haven't noticed much of a difference in terms of network and source timing, but I always leave it source timing. And here I actually use allow hardware acceleration. By default, this is unchecked, but with a stream PC, you might as well use your video card for rendering. Why not? So that's what I've selected. Uh, now here, um, normally you can leave, you can go with uh, different color spaces here you can go 601 or 709 but leave range the yuv range and partial when you go to full it gives you this kind of whited out kind of uh effect you don't want to do that so just leave it in partial and 709 for color space is good and then latency mode you have normal which is safe and low experimental um i've never had issues with using low and it's always worked great for me. Normal, you're going to see a little bit more latency in the video compared to the game PC. If you want that near zero latency, what I was just talking about earlier, then what you want to do is you want to use low. And that's really it for setting it up. I mean, you see it, it's there, uh, it's really neat. Now, you can also use OBS Studio to send an NDI signal. Okay, so here, what you would do is you'd go to NDI output settings and then you would select your main output preview output. Now, um, you can name these different things and the main output here would be, you know, what I've called it here. And you could send that over your network just by sending that, selecting the main output and selecting OK. Now, what that'll do is anything right here including overlays, whatever audio that's being processed by OBS will then be sent over your network to another PC. So a lot of people like using OBS Studio for this on their game PC. You don't have to you don't have to start streaming, you don't have to start recording to do this. It just does it by selecting the NDI tools output here. Okay. Now realize when you're doing this, you're not going to be able to change your settings here. Um, all this stuff will be grayed out all your stream settings and all your output settings and everything that you would go try to change your video resolution, all that will be grayed out because you need to uncheck the NDI tools uh, output to get access back to that again. It's just like as if you were streaming and recording, a lot of that stuff gets locked out. Okay, before we close the video out, let's just talk about a couple reasons why I think you should take NDI over a capture card. Okay, again, it's free, right? The big thing that I want you to think about is your budget and your return on investment if you were to go and buy a capture card. Okay. Right now, I think, especially for even for bigger streamers, uh, you know, unless you're bringing in, you know, six, seven hundred dollars a month or more on your live stream, you know, you got to consider where you want to spend your money. Uh, you got a lot of PC uh, upgrades coming out here lately, new video cards coming out, new processors coming out that would probably give you a better return on investment than buying a capture card when NDI can give you the quality that you want for your live stream. And I'm not telling you not to go buy a capture card, but I'm just telling you to think about where you are in your streaming career because NDI 
can really help you to propel you to higher levels without spending any money or allowing you to spend money on other things that would give you a better return on investment, such as a new computer, new GPU, new CPU, that sort of thing. Think about that when you're using this and you're considering what you want to do. And I really recommend everybody try out NDI first. See how it runs on their PC. It's not going to run well for everybody. Uh, there are people that have issues with it. I understand that. It's worth a try because it's free. It doesn't hurt. So try it, download it. And if it does work well for you, then just stick to it. And then, you know, later on, once you have saved enough money or you're making enough money that you can consider the investment of a nice capture card later on down the road, then so be it. I mean, for me, I'm perfectly happy with NDI. I use it all the time and you know, I think the video quality is really good. That is it guys. I hope you have a great weekend. Listen, if you like this video and if you like videos like this and I want you to come back, please t hit that subscribe button. I'm telling you, please, please. I love talking to you. I love helping people out and I want people to know about protocols like this like NDI because it really is something good that's free and it's it has really gained a lot of footing here in the last couple of years and you're going to see a lot more of it I'm telling you so anyway make sure you subscribe hit the bell so you'll know when I have a video that goes live I want to see you come back all right guys thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it and Share with your friends. They may find this very helpful for them if, they, if, if they're trying to live stream, they want to get into a two PC setup like this. And I will say, I guarantee you, in future, in, in future consoles, we'll, I bet we will see NDI. I bet we will, um, because like I said, it's free. The protocol is out there that they can use to build into their own software. And I just don't see why they wouldn't. Anyway, that's it guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you later.